for Coaches show is presented by Window Concepts and Affinity Plus Federal Credit Union. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Mariucci Arena for this week's Gopher Show as we switch over to the Frozen Sport. And we have the coaches of the programs here at the University of Minnesota joining us. Brad Frost, head coach of the women's team, and Bob Motzko, the head coach of the men's team. And first off, congratulations, gentlemen. A great weekend. Both of you deliver sweeps. Uh, first, though, I want to know, do you live for this time of the year? The fan base is obviously excited when there's trophies on the line and national championships, but we'll start with you, Brad. I mean, do you look at this time of year coaching-wise as something that you really look forward to? Absolutely. I think, you know, all coaches uh, coach to try and develop their players as, as people and, and as athletes, but there's a big trophy at the end, right, or a couple big trophies, and so... Uh, the athletes are certainly very excited as coaches. We know we're nearing the end here as well, and, and we want to make sure that our team is playing as, as well as they can to try and hoist one of those trophies at the end of the year. And, Bob, how about for yourself? Because you're a process guy. You obviously build towards this, but does it change for you when you get to this late in the season? Uh, our, our sport, it's all about playoffs. You know, it starts right at the top. You know, the NHL, Stanley Cup, and how you play it down. And college hockey is no different. You know, we, we have a little tier system to us, though. It's banner season. You play for your league championship, your playoff championship, a region championship, and then obviously the big one at the end. So it, we're, we're banner hunting right now. All the teams in the country, it all amps up. It's a great time of the year. All right, Brad, let's start with your team last weekend and what you were able to do. You opened the WCHA playoffs against St. Thomas, taking the Tommies down in back-to-back -back nights. Uh, what did you see out of your club, and how do you feel you're heading at this point? Yeah, I really do feel like it was one of our best weekends of the year, which is really encouraging as you get into to the start of playoffs. Uh, you you want to be playing well. And uh, most coaches would say they're playing well at, at this time of year, right? Uh, but uh, it, we came out of the gates really, really quickly uh, on Friday and, and Saturday and, and put the Tommies away pretty early. You look at playing a team like St. Thomas, a program that's just getting its feet wet at the Division One level. How are you able to get such a quick response from your players? Well, we actually had played them the weekend before um, right, that's right. at their place. and. Uh, their goaltender stopped 55 shots both nights, and, and we won 2-1 in overtime and 4-2. And, um, and, and so I think that actually motivated our players even a little more as playoffs were getting going, and we were playing the Tommies again uh, uh, on our home rink. So we didn't need to say too, too much. They, they knew the importance of this first round. And, Bob, you wrapped up the regular season taking out Ohio State, uh, shutting them out in Game 1. Game 2, I think, if I can put some words in your mouth, perhaps was the more pleasing one to you. Not the way it started, but the way it finished. Because your team had everything in the bank. They didn't have anything to play for, but they wanted to walk out of here winners on seniors night. Well, what, what I'm most impressed with our group was, is, is you know, we technically had the league championship wrapped up weeks ago. And here we're coming down the stretch. And both a week ago at Penn State and this week with Ohio State, our guys had no let up in their game. And uh, they laid it all out on the line. and and. That was impressive to me, and that starts with our leadership, um, with Brock Faber and our older guys just setting the stage, and our guys didn't let up, and it was, it was a great weekend for us. You're right, we put ourselves, I've not, I don't think I've ever seen two five-minute majors on the same call and put us down, you know, a couple guys for five minutes, but we battled through it. You know, and that's, the only two goals we gave up were on the five uh, with those two penalties yeah. on the whole weekend. So our, our guys did a terrific job. It, all we want now is that momentum to keep going. All right, but you have, unfortunately, a week off to try to keep that momentum going. But one thing that we've seen, Brad, this year is the fans starting to pour in to watch both clubs. We'll start with yours. You set a record attendance at Ritter Arena, which is saying something because you have had action-packed games in that building for years. But you've worked at this to build that fan base. You make sure there's a lot of engagement between your program and the fans. Oh, absolutely. I, you know, our, our main fan base is these young girls and, and their parents and their teams. And, and our, uh, our, our marketing and our ticket office has done just an exceptional job here this year, uh, getting tons of, of groups, um, uh, large groups uh, from these different communities and, and these different associations. And so it has been so fun for our players 
and I think they're very deserving of it. You know, right, they're, right. They're around for a long time. I, th I still think it's one of the best deals in uh, in the state of, of Minnesota in regards to a five to eight dollar ticket to come and watch. Uh, Olympians and All-Americans on, on both teams and so uh, it has been so exciting for our, our group um, to be able to play in front of packed houses and and they deserve it. And Bob you heard it from day one when you took this job uh, Mariucci's empty nobody's there nobody cares about gopher hockey now that they're not in the WCHA and it'll never be the same and now you're stuffing this place you've averaged over 1500 more fans than a year ago and I think it's up to eight or nine sellouts this season and that's a, a pretty impressive effort considering the size of this joint well first it's been awesome to, to have the crowds back and especially you have to give a nod to the student section our student section has just been packed and it puts such a, a an energy in the building that it gets everybody fired up. But what, we've said it here, hey, the Wu era, the Lucier era, all had packed houses. So this is nothing new. The Gopher fans haven't gone anywhere. We had to give them a reason to come back. Uh, our kids play hard. We've got a lot of skill and talent. And, and, you know, with our students coming back, you know, everyone's talking since COVID. Everyone's back out. Whatever it is, it's working. And, and, and uh, the juice in the building is sure a lift to our program. All right, we move now into single elimination play for all the teams when you get further into this. And, Bob, you know it comes down to goaltending. And you have a very special one. It's a very unique story what Justin Close has had to do to take this position. Last year he was thrown into the fire in the middle of the year, came through for you, got to the Frozen Four, and now he's really rolling for you now that he knows it's his net. You know, and it's one of the things with our program right now, you know, the accolades get thrown around, you know, the Cooley, Snuggerud, Nyes, Faber, Johnson, Lacombe, you know, uh, you know, big time names, but the heartbeat behind our team has been Justin Close. And our guys have complete faith in him. He's just a wonderful young man uh, and, a, and a heck of a competitor, and he keeps getting better. And it's a great story. He found himself a, the number one goalie, and he's he just continues to grow for us, and our guys have to complete. We all have complete faith in him. We're in good hands there. All right, and for you, we talked about it last time you were on the show, but Skylar Vetter continues to just pile up shutout after shutout. Uh, she is really rolling now that she has become your number one. How do you think she looks at the postseason, knowing that it is going to be her net when it comes yeah. deeper into the tournament? Boy, I think she's really excited, and and you know. It's uh, when you can have a goaltender that is not just physically skilled, but mentally tough as well. Um, uh, it, it gives you and your team a, a ton of confidence, and that, that's Skyler. She, if she gets scored on, she uh, flushes it, takes the puck out of the net, <laughs> and she's on to the next one and, and just gives our team a lift uh, when we need it. And so uh, she was on the bench last year when we were making our, uh, our postseason run, and, and I know she feels like she can help our team uh, uh, accomplish the goals that we want to do here this year. Yeah, there's so much more for these two teams to succeed. You're in the frozen face-off coming up. Bob, you'll have a playoff series here against a to-be-named opponent a week from this weekend, so lots more to go with Gopher Hockey. But when we come back here, much more on the Gopher Coaches Show. We'll be joined by one of the captains of the men's team, Brock Faber, who really has lit the lamp this season for the U of M. He'll join us, and we'll go inside Emily's world, a unique look inside of one of the greater Gopher women's players. That's and much more as we continue here on the Gopher Coaches Show. watching the Gopher Coaches Show. Welcome back to Mariucci Arena and the Gopher Coaches Show. And there it is, the first NCAA championship team for the University of Minnesota, winning back in 1974. Herb Brooks was the man that led that charge. And hopefully there'll be a, another picture like that maybe coming up in a couple of weeks but no pressure I know Bob you don't like it when I, I go there head coach Bob Motzko rejoins us and uh, one of the captains of the Gopher hockey team Brock Faber joins us as well and first off Brock it's been a pretty good year for you uh, already you've set career highs goals assists points uh, wins are, are piling up you're number one in the country but 
How have you seen this season in your eyes? Because you're the one that has to live it. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's it's been a great, great year for us. Obviously with, first off, the crowds. The crowds have been, uh, you know, spectacular for us. Um, the guys in the locker room, uh, definitely one of the tightest, tightest groups I've ever been a part of. Um, you know, top to bottom, we, we spent so much time together. And, um, you know, there is a different feel about this group, no doubt. And um, obviously it, it's just fun to get this place packed again. And obviously, like you said, get some wins under our belt. And, um, you know, we're playing good hockey right now. So um, obviously looking forward to, to the postseason here and uh, keeping it rolling. So, Bob, he comes back uh, with Olympic experience, with World Junior experience. How far can you push him because of that experience that he's already taken in? Well, you don't have to push Brock very far because he works his tail off every single day. But, you know, I, I, I had one theory that I, I, I spent a little time with Brock at last year in, in, in the wild. You know, Brock left us after his Bantam year, and, and he's always been the young guy uh, every place he'd been and only and even now he's a junior but he just turned 20 years old uh this last summer so this is the first time in a while he's been a veteran he's been an older guy and and he 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 can handle the weight on his shoulders but now we're seeing a more comfort level in all parts of Brock's game that that's pouring out so it I'm I'm so happy for him I mean he's 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 a world-class defender but there's more in there too from an offensive side he's finding it he's becoming a more rounded player but most important to us he's just a terrific leader and and we're so fortunate he made the decision to come back with us all right well I'm looking through coach because you won this big piece of hardware here <laughs> the big Ted regular season title uh that that's a pretty hefty piece of, uh, it, it of metal heavy. there. It was sure it is. was it difficult hoisting that thing at all when you grabbed it, or was it felt <laughs> like a feather? No, it wasn't wasn't too bad. But you know, obviously we're uh, we're thankful for this one. Obviously we've we like you said played great all year, and um, you know, but we're looking for something a lot you know a lot bigger, nicer than that thing. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's it's a good it's, it's a good start for us. Um, obviously we're we're looking for three trophies. That's one and. Um, just trying to, you know, carry it into the postseason, keep playing well. So, All right, there is one line on this team that everybody is talking about, and we got to get your thoughts on Snuggerud, Nyes, and Cooley, mm -hmm. and what you see working with them. And when did you see perhaps the gelling of those three? Because, you know, you guys don't have years to build chemistry here. Right. It's one year and boom, let's go. Yeah. And these guys are the top scoring line in college hockey. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's it's special. It's fun going against them. Obviously, you know, they, they push every guy on the team, uh, you know, night in, night out, like practices, everything. Obviously, it's great for our decor going against them. Um, three guys that that talented it's you know it's a challenge but it's good for us like I said so um, yeah and those three they've obviously been they've been going all year um, I think the past few weekends here I think that that's when they've really started to mesh um, they're playing the game the right way and obviously they're you know the, the points and the goals and all the the crowds and everything have a lot to do with those three so um, you know it, it's special playing with three guys like that and Obviously, three unselfish human beings. They love it here. Um, they're here for the right reasons, and um, you know they're like world-class hockey players and people too. So, Bob, I mean, it's going to get tougher now. They're yeah. the target on their back. Do things change from your side, or do you tell them different things about what they're going to encounter now? No, one of the keys. That one that that is that's one of the better lines that I've ever seen in college hockey. But the key to our team has also been Nelson Nevers and Brodzinski. And now Hugland, Pitlick, and Kurth are coming on. Brody Lamb's playing his best hockey. Our, we, in the last month, we've had other guys now raising, their, raising the floor, uh, the temperature, and playing at a high level. So I know they get a lot of the accolades, and they're an outstanding line. And, and we wouldn't probably be where we are without what they're doing. But the key to our team right now is how the whole group's playing together. And... and, um, and we got one fantastic defensive core too that that is having a terrific season. We, we, get, we should get them all back healthy here coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, so we don't have many holes, and we, we're not going to hide from it. We just got to be playing our best hockey and keep our foot on the gas. 
All right, one quick thing before we go, Brock. You elected to come back this year. You and a couple of your other teammates, Johnson, Lacombe, wanted to come back. Now that you're this close to getting into the hardware season, as you said, you got one of three already. Yep. How is that thought process playing out in your mind right now? Yeah, obviously it's it's exciting because this is, um, you know, you, you, we all had where the, we all talked about it at the end of last year and, um, obviously, it was it was a disappointing uh, finish, but there was a lot of positives from last year. And um, you know, coming back this year, I think it was obviously mostly to try and bring a national championship home, but also just the the journey. You know, the the relationships, the people. Um, you know, the development side of things. It's there's a lot more to it than just coming back. Obviously, to win the big thing, which is you know the obviously the end yes. goal and the thing that we're all looking for, but. Um, you know, there, it's obviously been a great ride so far. And, um, you know, like I mentioned a few times, we're playing really good hockey right now. And um, obviously just trying to keep that going, keep the foot on the gas. And, um, you know, hopefully the dreams will come true here in the next few weeks. But, um, you know, with, you know, just saying, you know, obviously there's a lot of talk about our team. There's a lot in the social media. And, um, you know, we're just trying to focus on the guys in the locker room and doing what we can. And, um, you know, obviously it's a brotherhood down there, and um, so it's a, it's a special group, and we're excited to get this time going. So, All right. Well, I think that's music to your ears, Coach. Listen to that answer right there. That that's was all the right things. That's why he's the captain. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're going to take a break on the Gophers Go Coaches Show. When we come back, we're going to take you into Emily's Element, onto the ice, to show you just what it's like being a Gopher. To the Gopher Coaches Show. We are at Mariucci Arena, quiet this weekend as the Gopher men have the weekend off before resuming play in the Big Ten playoffs. But the Gopher women's team, they will be in the midst of it, the final faceoff. Head coach Brad Frost joins us now, semifinals Friday in your building. Um, this is your 22nd appearance. Now, you haven't been here for 22 years, but the program's 22nd appearance in this tournament, it is like playing for the national championship because of the power of your conference. Yeah, you're right, and I have been here 23 years, but uh, uh, to be in this tournament as many times as we have and, and to have the quality of teams that we have in this year's tournament is is like a national tournament. You know, Ohio State's one, we're three, Wisconsin's uh, five, Duluth is six. I mean, it, it, opportunity for people to see some of the best uh, women's college hockey here this weekend in the WCHA final faceoff, and we're looking forward to it. All right, now usually we have a player guest, but due to NCAA regulations, this is a mandated day off for your team, so we couldn't have a player. But we have something that we hope you'll find just as equally entertaining as Emily Oden wore a mic, so she was mic'd up, and here's how her world looks. Have you listened to the Zach Bryan Dawn song? Yeah, I have. It's you so like it. good. I like it. By the way. All there. By the way, King Aaron, nice save. I kind of have puppy fever right now. I want a puppy like myself. I know. I, I know I could never take care of it. Anyway, now we. No. No. I'm here. <laughs> like this summer, if I. So, as you can see, it's all business with your team <laughs> at practice. Yeah, talking about puppies and other things. Uh, <laughs> You know, Emily has been, she's a fifth year senior for us. She played forward for basically four and a half years. And, uh, and we moved her back to, to D um, after uh, a couple injuries uh, in the first half. And she's just done a rock solid job for us. And now that we're healthy, we thought about moving her back to forward, but really? she's been doing such a great job at D, we, we kept her there. 
Well, you look at what she has been able to do over 100 career points. Now, she came in as a winner, two state championships with Edina. How much does that help a player's confidence coming into a pro for program that expects to win, that expects to, as Bob said, grab more banners? Yeah, it's it's huge. I mean, we, we try and recruit great players, great people, but, man, if they can win some state championships or win some under-18 championships or things like that, that only gives them more confidence as they come walking through the door and, and then experience at this time of year as well because they know what it takes to win. And so uh, to have her uh, have the experience that she's had with those two state championships, even though it was a number of years ago, uh, certainly helps her and, and the rest of our team right now. And earlier we talked about Bob's big line. We have to talk about your superstar, Taylor Heisey, setting a school record this week, 169 games in maroon and gold. Uh, what does that tell you about her commitment to the university? Yeah, I don't know if uh, I should have asked our, our sports information guy, but uh, I don't know how many games she's actually missed in her career, if she's missed any, quite frankly. So, uh, you know, it says that... One, it, she's a fifth year, right? So she's mm -hmm. getting more games than maybe uh, most of those players that only had four games. But uh, but she's been incredibly healthy and very durable and obviously one of the best uh, players in the country as well. All right, let's pack Ritter Arena. Here's how to get tickets to the final faceoff. Friday, March 3rd, the Gophers will take on Wisconsin. 1-800-U-GOPHER or gophersports.com. And if you can't figure out a way to get there, you can watch the tournament on Fox 9 Plus. We'll have all the games. It's been great having your team on there this year, Coach. Ten seconds left. Thank you so much for everything. We appreciate it. And uh, let's get some more banners. I think there's some more room in this arena and your arena. Yeah, why not? Let's do it. <laughs>